Now the weird thing is that this is it's delayed all the it's time. It's delayed, so you don't really want to pay attention to that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So good morning. Welcome to my Facebook Live for Tuesday morning. We're starting a little bit late. I want to welcome one of my most loyal viewers and listeners, my sister, Susan Asher. Susan Rothman Asher, uh, it's really a pleasure to have you here live, to actually be here and yeah, to fun. be able to be in it, uh, be in the live today. And just, you know, one of the things that um, is really interesting about you and your family is that, you know, I've been a rower my whole life, I mean, at least since college. Um, and you guys have been really like when there was the, um, there was a race up in Oakland, this is before you guys started rowing, mm -hmm. you guys came out and watched me and Don actually said something, your husband said something to me that I've always taken as one of the biggest compliments. He said, you have a really long stroke, Mark. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I have a long stroke. I mean, and even today, I still think about that comment. Oh, that's awesome. He watched like my one race. And then years went by and you guys got into rowing. So I wanna just, and, and one of the things that I talk a lot about in terms of my coaching is how important it is for us to have these outlets, to have these other activities for a number of reasons. It cuts across all of, almost all of our domains. It certainly cost, cuts across our health domain because exercise and workout is really important to maintaining our physical health, but it, it impacts our sense of ourself. It uh, can impact our relationships because, you know, you form relationships with other rowers. So I want to, you know, and, and, and many more, but I don't want to just dominate, have you sit here and listen to me talk. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about sort of your history. Like, were you an active kid? You know, and how did you first get into athletics and, and what it mean, did it mean for you maybe as a teenager or grow, as growing up? Yeah, it's interesting, actually. I was an active kid. I roller skated all the time and, you know, we went to the park all the time when we were, li you know. I, and I remember you guys and... like roller skating up and down the sidewalk with, with Margie, our older sister, your older sister, my younger sister. Yeah. And Chelsea. And Chelsea. Yeah, yeah I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was active for sure. Um, and then in junior high, I don't know if you remember those terrible runs we had to do the 600. Oh, and man. Oh, I hate, they were miserable. They were miserable. I hated them. And I swore then, yeah. oh my God, this is the worst thing I've ever done. I'm never going to run ever. Were, were you good at the 600s? I wasn't terrible. I was terrible. But I wasn't good. See, and that's comforting because I was <laughs> terrible. So it's comforting to hear that somebody who was like mid middle of the pack yeah. hated them as much as I Oh, I hated them. Yeah. And I, uh, seriously, I swore, like, mm -hmm. this is the worst thing I've ever done. I'll never run. I don't understand why people run. I will right. never run. Right. Then I got to high school and joined cross country. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that happen? So it actually happened through Margie, my our sister. Um, she joined cross country just because friends were on the team mm -hmm. and it was a very big social thing for her. And wasn't she also, didn't she also do gymnastics? Well, we did gymnastics together as kids uh -huh. just at the Y. I mean, it was okay. never serious, Okay, but, but we did it for a long time. Okay. And that was, and you guys would stage these little dances, I think that yeah. I always felt like were based on some of the gymnastics moves you yeah. learned. Yeah. Yeah, they were. So that was part of your life as well. Yeah. So, then, so I was a tumbler and a, you mm -hmm. know, just like a rough and tumble kid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then in high school, I sort of got brought into Margie's social group and it was basically based on the cross country team. So then um, I, well, I actually did one, the first semester of my high school um, time, I tried to be on the volleyball team, right? which was a huge disaster because I'm so short. Right. Um, but then I was allowed to be the man a manager of the team and travel with them for games and like take care of, you know, behind the scenes things. Mm -hmm. And I got really, and the, the tryouts for the volleyball team was the hardest physical work I had ever done up to that point in my life. Mm -hmm. It, um, it just, and it taught me a lot about working hard and like working through a level that I had never known you could work through uh -huh. like previously that was my end point right and like when you get to exhaustion when you get to a certain level of breathing mm -hmm. hard mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. muscle fatigue or just sweating so much that you've never sweat before in your life and you're like what is happening to my body right now uh -huh. how, how um, old were you then it was uh, the fall semester of 10th grade actually it was the summer before between 9th and 10th grade because they did a lot of summer practice and then the tryouts were right before school started so you were working out with the team 
prior to the beginning this is like of the school 14 year. 14 and 15, somewhere around there. Probably, yeah, 15. Okay. Because I didn't have that experience until I joined the true crew team in college. Oh, wow. I was 18. Wow. And the only reason I I hit I would hit that exhaustion point, exhaustion point, like I remember like a, the, one of the first three mile runs we had to do seemed like it was like a marathon. It was, I was like, there was no way I'm going to run three miles. And the only reason I pushed myself past that point is because I said to myself, you have decided to live your life differently than you've lived it before. Uh-huh. That's your goal for yourself in college. Uh-huh. You may not quit. And that's the only reason I finished that first three, that's mile, awesome. three mile run. Yeah. But once I finished that first three mile run, I knew I could do it. Right. Exactly. You learn different... Um, you learn that you contain abilities within yourself that you never knew you had. That's a Which really... is one of the things I love about sports to begin, like that's what I love about sports. So that's a really beautiful way you just put that. So fast forward now, how, how does that apply to rowing? On a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> rowing is definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, the workouts are hard and there are definitely times when I'm like, oh my God, I am going to die. There's no way mm-hmm, I can finish mm-hmm, this workout, mm-hmm. especially on the erg. The erg is so much harder for me than in the boat. Mm-hmm. That's um, the rowing machine, just for, for people who are watching who are uninitiated, where you have none of the pleasure of being in the boat. Like there's something really hypnotic about being on the water. Yeah, it's and- very, very tranquil. There's a rhythm to it. And the sound of the oars hitting the water is a very... Um, relaxing sound almost. I mean, not that it's a relaxing thing to be doing, but it's soothing. it's a kind of soothing. Yeah. I find it soothing. Yeah, I find it soothing also. Mm-hmm. And you hear the water sort of moving alongside the boat and um, and the rhythm of it is really good in terms of breathing and I can just get into a place in my mind. Um, yeah, it's tranquil. Mm-hmm. And you get none of that when you're on the machine. It's literally just like, the diff- it's almost like the difference between a treadmill, running on a treadmill, and running outdoors. Right. You know? Or like if you can imagine running by the beach where it's beautiful and, and scenic. Exactly. So, but it's also, and because of that, it's the most physically taxing because all you have is the pain of the physical exertion. Well, and you also have the monitor, <laughs> which you don't have in the boat. Okay, how I does mean, that you, impact you? Because it's, um, you keep track, you're looking at the numbers the right. whole time and you're watching your time and you're watching your stroke rate and if the numbers jump up that means you're going slower and then you're like oh I'm going too slow I got to push harder but then you're tired and it's just that constant reminder that you not you're not working hard enough well and then and then you've also got the time right. telling you that like you're in pain and it feels like an hour's gone by and you're like it's only been 30 seconds. That's exactly what I was thinking. That was exactly what I was thinking. It's like, oh my God, it's only 30 seconds. Fuck me. Yeah. And Why am I doing this? Yeah. 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 And you, when, when you get to the halfway point, you're like, oh my God, I'm only halfway. Yes. Ugh. Yes. I, I actually have to hard. play games where I don't look at the monitor. Same. And, and sometimes I put it down. Sometimes I'll put it down or cover it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we did something really interesting, not last week because I was here last week, but the week before. Our coach actually, we did one piece with it up, and then on the second piece, he said, put the monitor down. And almost instantly, he said, every single one of you look better mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm, monitor down. Mm-hmm. Your form is better. Your, your, I can see the drive more efficient. Like, everything about it is better without the mm-hmm, monitor. Mm-hmm. So, that monitor is a death trap. It's a death trap. And it also, and, it, and, it, and I notice that I do better. Like, I'll do, I'll close my eyes. Yeah. And I'll do better when my eyes are closed. Yeah. In fact, Miles, my son, who's 18 and just graduated from high school and he was on the high school rowing team, he and he hates erging just as much more in fact than anybody I've ever met. Well, he would I mean, he was amazing to me because he would develop almost like a vomit reflex every time he had to do an erg test. Yeah. He did actually. And, and yeah. but surprisingly, the two times he did an erg test with the monitor down, yeah. he PR'd. And didn't throw up. There you go. Yeah. See, that's how nefarious and evil that <laughs> stupid monitor is. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, when I finish the workout, the monitor holds all my workouts. I love right. being able I to have that historical that data. Exactly. It's like, wow, I really did this. It's really important to be able to compare them from different dates and see what was different and 
I, I keep a log on my phone and like record a little bit about how I felt and mm -hmm. what the pieces were and times and meters and stuff like that. So what do you think rowing has added to your life? It's added a lot, actually. Um, it's added, so my, my husband rose and my stepdaughter rode in college. Right. Um, and you rode in college. Right. And so right. it's, it's sort of created this bond between me and, and these people mm -hmm. that I just named. Mm -hmm. um, it gives us something to talk about that's kind of like our unique thing that right. we have like, together. Like a secret language. <laughs> yeah, almost. Like there's things that we can talk about that we understand. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's helped, um, in, a, in a way, it's actually brought me and my husband closer together because it's an activity that we do together. I mean, we're not in the same boat, mm -hmm. but we're down at the boathouse at the same time. We, our hours are the same. Our workouts are similar. We can talk about the workouts. We know all the same people. Um, and what about when you have like you go to regattas? Uh, yeah, you're going as a club or as a team, and you and he are going together. It's not like right. you're going off and saying, "Okay, Don, see you. I'll be back Saturday night." Right, which he did. He rode for a year before I started mm -hmm. rowing, mm -hmm. and I always felt left out. You know, I was always like, "Oh, I don't even know what he's doing today. Like, I can't even picture it." Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I could a little bit because I had gone to some of your races, and I'd gone to some of Chelsea's, my stepdaughter's races in college. But I just felt like I wanted to be a part of it mm -hmm. more. I wanted to be a part of that part of his life. Um, and so it's, that's helped a lot. Um, but it's also just brought a level of fitness that I've never had. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely, I mean, you can't tell from the run we did today, but I'm definitely the most fit I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. um, well, when you tell me about the level of workouts that you do, they're a lot closer to what I did in college at a yeah. Division 1A school, you know, yeah. a Division 1 school. Um, yeah, than what I'm able to do now as a master's rower. Right. Partially because I don't have the time to put in. And, you, and you're and you putting in... It's you about know, two hours a day. That's I put in about 45 minutes, not including yeah. travel time. Yeah, I mean, that's including the getting the boat on the water mm -hmm. and off the water mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But, that's a pretty big commitment. But it's a long time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that. but it's early in the morning, so it doesn't... I mean, it impacts my sleep, but it doesn't impact, like, the rest of my day right. in a way that... Right. Right. You know, fitting a longer workout in in the middle of the day or after work would be. So let's go back before we finish to that experience you had on the volleyball team where you were like working harder than you ever had before. You're this, you know, this 14 year old, 15 year old girl who's like physical, but you've hit something you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And and fast forward to where you are now when you're doing these intense workouts. Mm -hmm. What do you think that has made you? as a person, like when you're not in the boat, how do you think that impacts um, your life outside the boat? I like to think that it's made me um, more resilient. I don't know if that's true because I'm, you know, a very easy crier and like I, I feel things very deeply emotionally, so I don't know if I'm resilient in that way mm -hmm. per se. So resilience to you means not feeling emotion? No. <laughs> Can um, you be resilient and feel and have very a three dimensional motion, emotional experience? I think so. I'm not sure if I can actually. Like that's something that I think about a lot. Um, I bring emotion into almost everything I do. So okay, can that make it stronger though? It probably could. Like if we think about if we go back <laughs> to that volleyball moment or to that erg test moment or that you know when you're doing what like. Don, do you, like, you do 15,000 meters. Do you do 15,000 meters rowing? So, yes. Okay, so <laughs> so can you use that knob that when the emotions come up, the emotion there is like, get me out of this boat. Yeah, you know? yeah. Put me back in bed. <laughs> you know, it's fear. It's can I can I finish this? Do I have what it takes? Yeah. Can, can in spite of, and in, maybe even because of having those emotions, and in terms of like outside your boat life, like tears, feeling sadness, whatever you're feeling at a particular moment, can you actually turn that around and say, wait a minute, I am stronger than these feelings? Um, I haven't, but yeah, I think I could. I mean, I, that doesn't occur to me, so that's actually kind of a good thing right. for me to think about and right. try to remember. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think that's a lot about what coaching is about for me, mm -hmm. is it helping the people I care about, my clients, my, my family, um, when they uh, when they invite me into that conversation to say 
is there a way to turn that around? Is what looks like a weakness actually a strength? Hmm. I think I need coaching. <laughs> how, how do you do that is what I need. Like I have to create a mantra or something to, to flip the switch like that. So there Because I definitely tend to go toward the negative. Sure, we, many of us do. So, so, that's, so there's a couple ways to do that. You have a, a little bit of a leg up. Is it, It's what I call templating. You have a template for when you felt emotion. You hit a barrier and you couldn't go forward. And you did it anyway. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, I'm, we went to the same high school. I'm picturing it back in the uni gym and, you know, or wherever it was. Yeah. And you were like, I can do, I, holy crap, I can't do this. Wait a minute, I can. Mm -hmm. You have that mo model of yourself. Right. And I feel that a lot in the boat. Right. So it's, it's. Yes, it happens a lot, and I feel that moment of, if I were a normal person, mm -hmm. I would stop right now. <laughs> right, right, right. But I know that I can go further, and our co my coach knows that I can go further. So let's template that. Yeah. Because what this is another way that athletics, that physical activity, that hobbies, would give us a model to say, not that you're not a normal person, because what's the problem of being a normal person? Right. In, out of the boat in our daily life, shit happens. Yeah. Shit happens that we look at and we're like, holy crap, how am I going to get through this? Yeah. And then what if we can say to ourselves, wait a minute, I got through it here. Mm -hmm. I got through it in the boat. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was going to die. And then the coach said another thousand meter piece. And somehow I managed to get through that. Yeah. So this trauma is happening to me. This terrible thing is happening. I could get through this. Mm -hmm. I, I can do it there. Can I do it here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, one one thing I do think about, and I do apply this to life, um, and I guess it's you know kind of that age old thing that you learn in all kinds of other groups too. But it's literally one stroke at a time. Right. You know, I'm literally like, I just have ten more strokes. 10 more strokes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 10 more strokes. And sometimes, so sometimes I will even count like outside the boat in real life, like, okay, I'm just going to do one, one thing. Yeah. 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 And then at home or in life, I, I do that too. More on a, a little bit of a broader scale with that typical, like one day at a time mm -hmm, kind of concept, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, especially right after mom and dad died, like mm -hmm. I was very much like, this is terrible. I feel terrible. I just have to get through one day at a mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, I'll maybe I'll feel different. Mm -hmm. And and that's and that and you did, you know. Yeah. And we all did, you know. Yeah. All of us who've had loss, all and we all have. All of us have bad things happen. We right. have painful events happening. Right. And, and I think that's a very good way to help you get through mm -hmm. those barriers. You know, just remind yourself it's. It's the little steps. Just take the little steps exactly. and you can eventually get there. And it's okay if it's slower. And it's okay if it's harder and it doesn't make you weaker if you're crying, if you're, if you're, if you're resisting as you go through it, but you keep doing it anyway. Because that's what's happening in the boat as well. Yeah. So it's, oh, there's so much self-talk like, oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do this. Why am I doing this? This is terrible. I can't do this. And then all of a sudden I have to flip. I, I literally say this to myself. Yes, you can do it. You have done it. You do it a lot. You can do it. And that's why, p possibly the most important reason why these, these, these things that we do that we take on for ourselves, they're like little laboratories. Yeah. Because you are proving yourself. You did it there. Right. And now it's just a step to say, if I did it there, I can do it here. Mm -hmm. And it's applying the same kind of ideas to other aspects. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thanks for my, my, again, my most loyal viewer. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. It's yeah, a, it's, it's, been a, it's a real, it was, it was a really good conversation and um, I love you. I, I love, love being you your too. brother. Oh, one other thing I want to say before we close, okay. we're running a little bit long, but that's cool. Um, the other day we went rowing together and um, uh, I, you got ahead of me and I thought I'd catch up to you and it, you know, other stuff happened and I'd never caught up. Oops, oh, sorry. Oh. Um, and I was worried because where we were rowing, there's a part of the water that you can't row in after 8 a.m. It's dangerous because speedboats come out and they do, um, they do water skiing and the rowers can't be in the water ski area. 
and I was terrified that I hadn't told you to be sure to be out by eight o'clock, and mm-hmm. I pictured you, my little sister, <laughs> getting the big wakes from the from the speedboat and flipping. and flipping or getting yelled at by the lifeguard, you know, by like the boating oh, yeah. people because yeah. because it's because it's really dangerous. And so I felt this like big brotherly feeling of like, oh my god, I didn't take care of my sister. I didn't Aww. I didn't warn her. <laughs> That's why at the end when I saw you going back to the dock. And I was like, oh, good, she didn't go into the, you know, yeah. she didn't go into the danger zone. I almost had. It's really interesting because I really thought about it. I was really thinking like, oh, maybe I'll just do one more lap around the stadium. Um, and I was and giving I don't a, know what stopped me. I'm going to vote for ESP because I was sitting here like, you know, like, Susie, don't go in the stadium. Don't go in the stadium. Don't go in the stadium. Please don't go in the stadium. I must have gotten and it. you must have gotten the I message. I didn't. I was like, eh, forget it. I'll just go in. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, thank you so much. Yeah. This was really fun. It was really good. And be with us again next week. You can definitely check out my other Facebook Live recordings on uh, Mark Rothman Progress Coach. And I've got dozens of other videos there. My newest one, Jordan Peterson versus Tony Robbins, talking about what do men need to be in the 21st century, 2021. What do men need to be? Check it out. And thanks for watching.